So we've heard a bit about the GoFundMe campaigns, and let's dive a little bit deeper into that and, and look at some of the different campaigns that have been launched out there, uh, whether it's Gay Cities with Save Our Spaces, Jägermeister teaming up with uh, the Lesbian Bar Project for Save the Night, and hear how our bar owners in New York City have been faring. Well, we at Gay Cities, you know, we list uh, gay bars and clubs in over 240 cities worldwide, every continent uh, except Antarctica. Uh, and uh, we have noticed this year, more than any other year, we've had to mark more venues closed, permanently closed than ever in our history before. And we wanted to do something about that. So we reached out to our friends at GoFundMe and said, how can we uh, connect and actually help these businesses? And so GoFundMe has a, a, a 501c3 nonprofit arm, and we've partnered with them to create a grant program for uh, LGBTQ nightlife spaces. And we're raising money to fund that. And to date, we've raised over $40,000 uh, that we'll be able to grant to any, uh, any venue in the United States LGBTQ venue in the United States that that applies and we'll distribute that money and we're continuing to raise we're trying to raise as much as we possibly can yeah. at gaycities.com slash save our spaces um, to help these, you know, like you said, these are our meeting places for us. These are uh, places where we can let our hair down and feel uh, our, our truest selves. Um, and, you know, the, the gay bars and, and nightlife have always historically had challenges. It's a tough business, uh, but I'd hate for the pandemic to be the reason why these spaces go away. So we want to save those spaces. And I, I, I want to credit the Gill Foundation, what they're doing with, the, with Ju Bar Julius in New York, matching all the donations going to it. What GoFundMe did, they raised a big fund for the Stonewall Inn and now t partnering with us to administer this fund. Um, you know, there's a, a lot of people that, who really care and want to do right by these businesses and by our community. And, and I'm thankful to have a, a role to play in that. We were yeah. lucky enough to well, get a grant from the Gill Foundation that really helped us get through. And, and under Kurt's leadership, as someone who runs the bar day to day, he has made sure that anyone who walks in there, not just from an LGBTQ, let's make it a safe space, but from a physical medical perspective, feel completely safe really remodeling, revamping. So all the COVID rules are in place. We're probably one of the strictest and, and the most adherent in the village. Um, and uh, the whole team has done an incredible job making sure that everyone who walks in there feels like they, they can be inside, know they're, oh, they're gonna have to follow these restrictions and rules, but still enjoy themselves and feel completely like um, that they can be inside and have a good time. Listen in on some outside the box fundraising ideas from our friend, Art Smith from Gay Archives. Last year, I was having a conversation with some friends in Atlanta, yeah. and uh, one of them was the owner, or one of the owners, of um, the most iconic gay bar in Atlanta, which was called Backstreet, yep. which is the shirt I'm wearing right now. <laughs> and um, she had mentioned that this year, 2020, uh, was the 45th anniversary of the opening of that club. Okay. They opened in 1975. And we talked about doing a fundraising t-shirt. So I worked with their logo. I digitized it because, you know, files from 1975 are not the best digital quality. Yep. Uh, they're basically photocopies of print ads. <laughs> and, um, and I introduced the, um, the t-shirt design yep. to commemorate 45 years since they opened. And it was a fundraiser for the Atlanta Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, and it went really well. It, it sold very well. And, um, Gradually, you know, after talking to people about it, I said, you know, there are a lot of other bars from the 70s and 80s that a lot of people talk about and you reminisce about them when you're sitting around, you know, socializing. Yeah. And I started to recreate other ones, um, contacted the owners when I could, and I ended up with about half a dozen by March. The LGBTQ community is known for its resilience in the face of adversity. For every bar that closed, there's one that adapted, stayed open, and is poised for success here in 2021. So it's up to us, all of us, to step up the way Gill Foundation and Gay Cities have done, as they've shown an example of how we can all move forward. Follow the links in this video for the next part on our series here on the state of LGBTQ bars. Do you have any 
favorite or great bar stories you'd like to share with our audience, please post them and tag us in them. And also just make sure to stay tuned as we uh, tackle additional controversial, exciting topics here on this new series, I Love Gay Views.